Hey guys, I'm back and let's jump right on into it. Y'all know how I like to do. I'm doing a color retouch on my client as well as an extension refresh by using the microlink extension method. Um, extensions aren't extensions, y'all, but I te 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 uh, technically, for some reason I can't speak today, but technically I'm doing a braidless sew-in. I'm just going in with the beaded method and opposed to doing a traditional sew-in where I braid the hair and add the extension or the track onto it. So we're gonna retouch this gray coverage. My client hasn't been in to see me in a while. Um, since quarantine, we're here in Arizona. We're just getting to the point where we're um, able to get back to work. So we gotta get that uh, color refresh for my client and get her fly again. So. We're going in with, if I have not already mentioned it, uh, Matrix Color Sync 5MM. And what that is, it's a level 5 Mocha Mocha, and I'm going in with 20 volume. The reason I'm going in with 20 volume, for my professionals out there, you guys know that with great coverage, uh, 20 volume is the best way to go because what it's going to do is going to soften up that cuticle to accept the color more off or um, better not more often but better <laughs> because gray hair is so resistant so i'm just gonna go um subsection i like to do quadrants with whether your hair is long or short i like to do quadrants but the most important thing is that i like to make sure each area is completely saturated stay tuned and just watch um i like watching color applications it's soothing to me so um just uh, enjoy and and watch me saturate when in doubt add more product than you have to because like i said you want to make sure it's saturated so that you don't have spotty color we're going to go ahead and get her fly um so stay tuned Okay guys, what you see here is some foil. And when I'm doing color blocking such as what you see on on your screen, I like to isolate each section. So because I have the blonde on my client's mid lengths and ends and her base color is a level 5 mocha mocha or like a a chocolate brown. I do not want any of that chocolate color to transfer to the blonde because what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be boxing myself into a color correction situation and why make my life hard? Why do that? So instead of um, making myself go into a color correction situation, I just go ahead and block that section off with some foil or you can use some mesh or you can use some saran wrap whatever your heart little heart desires um, but the the whole point of isolating it is so that the color does not transfer I do not want any of the dark color to transfer into the blonde because then what I'll have to do is go ahead and remove the pigment 
and depending on how um, how much color is transferred onto your blonde or how deep it got into the cuticle which it shouldn't get in too deep if you're able to catch it right away but still why put yourself through all of that when you can just avoid it from happening so that's why you guys see me putting foil on my clients hair is just to isolate the color to make it easy for myself um so i do have a question for all of my professionals out there or anyone who really gets color what are some of your color your favorite color formulas when it comes to color blocking like you see me doing on my client now do you guys like to uh do like a, a blonde with red roots or i'm just throwing out some stuff do you guys like black roots or new growth with transitioning to your blonde what are some of your favorite go-to transitional colors with this type of blonde i love on my client um, that we're doing this color on I like to transition from a chocolate um, brown into the blonde which is really pretty and again I swear y'all the color it's looking so warm even though we're gonna deal with this in a little bit um, in terms of toning it but even after I tone it the color still looks warm and it is not warm I just believe it's how I record it and my lighting is completely off and I'm, I'm learning Okay, this is just my second YouTube video, and this is my second time, like, recording, um, like, a tutorial this long. Usually, it's, like, a quick little snippet in sunlight, but I'm learning how to operate the, the lighting in my room. I'm gonna get it together, y'all. I promise you. I'm putting that on my to-do list. It is happening as we speak. But I just wanted to deliver the information so that you guys can be equipped with um, being able to provide services behind the chair if you have any questions, please Please comment below. That's what I'm here for. I am an educator to give you a little bit of background on myself I've been in this industry licensed over 10 years. I am a matrix educator I've been with the company for about five years probably longer than that. So I do have a little bit of um, I, I, I do come with um, some knowledge equipped with knowledge to be able to help other stylists grow behind the chair I, I love to see other people grow um, when I'm able to help out in any way I can so that's why I decided to do my YouTube channel well it's been requested of me for a couple of years now so during quarantine I just put it on my little goal list and voila here it is second video in the making Stay tuned, drop some hints on what other content you would like to see on this channel. I am down and up for some challenges. But uh, continue to watch. Um, you will see me make sure I go in and check each section to make sure each subsection or quadrant is fully saturated um, because I do not like spotty color. So I want to make sure I have... Um, really great coverage as you will see I'm going in and I'm separating just to make sure that this is happening look at that color so when I turn her, her her around it's just the lighting it's actually cooler than what it is I'm gonna keep saying it because it is the case you guys go or you guys will be able to see at the end her hair is not warm like that <laughs> I'm just so distraught but hey it came out beautiful okay so we're at the bowl and I decided that well earlier on that I was gonna tone and refresh her ends as well because it had been a while and what happens is that when your toner is has been on for a while it fades and then the underlying pigments begins to uh, show it starts to reveal itself so since that is the case I decided to go in and do a tone refresh on my client to um, cancel out some of that warmth and I also toned her extensions to where you can't even tell that she has extensions like when um, once I put it up to her head and rinse and shampoo this toner out you guys will be able to see okay so right here when I put the extensions close to her hair up and out of the way of the camera you can't even tell that they're extensions because I like to color the extensions and match them as close to the client's hair as possible so that's what y'all are seeing here stay tuned you guys will see me do the microlink extensions in it a little bit and then style her out here we go so what i wanted to do i wanted to show you guys a 
um, a trick. So if you guys have extra hair and you guys don't put enough links on your row, you can always just add another row like I just did here. And then once I go in, I like to secure the, um, the weft by going over the weft again. So you'll see me sew down the extensions going all the way to the right. And then I lock it and secure it in and then I come back over and start sewing going in the direction toward the left side. And I'll keep doing that until I feel like um, it is enough um, to make sure that that weft is secure, not going anywhere for a long time. And then at the end, you guys will see me dab a little product on the air on the, the thread that I do cut off. It is, what is it called? It's like a adhesive for extensions. And basically what you do, you just tap it on the end of your thread. So when your client goes to, because it's going to be inevitable, your clients will, you know, brush their hair or comb their hair. And sometimes the comb and the brush, it tends to snag the extensions a little bit. And what it also does, it causes the thread to unravel, loosening up the weft. So to ensure that that doesn't happen, I like to use my little tip and trick and just add a little adhesive to the end of the thread so that it doesn't unravel. And you guys will see me do that. Here in a little bit, um, once I go ahead and make sure that I feel okay with this weft being secured, locked in place, and not going anywhere. So you guys will see here, her hair looks, I'm using the Care Care stick to um, lay down the flyaways. That's my go-to. I love that wax stick. But as you guys can see, um, the lighting that I have, I have, um, I'm working behind a ring light and then I also have natural sunlight coming in and I think because those two are working against each other, it's causing a dark cast on my blonde. So if my client were to go outside, her hair is actually a lot cooler than when it's coming off to be. So you can see 